So for the past couple of years I've had quite a few mining rigs and I've got them strewn all over the room here. I also have been picking up some of these lower end uh, stations, you know, like the Hewitt Packard. I've got a lot of just random desktops and I've been looking online and noticed that a lot of the used market there, the refurbs, uh, they've all been sold out with everybody working from home, kids uh, no longer in school looking to play video games. Just, uh, it's a pretty tough market. So I've made a point of trying to take some of my old mining hardware and put them into some of these uh, you know, workstation grade desktops. Uh, and I really want to see how they perform. If they perform well enough, then I'll probably try to sell them on Craigslist. But uh, the intent of this video series here is uh, I'm going to be building some machines and I'm going to benchmark them. Uh, things like you know, Fortnite, Overwatch, uh, as well as some Cinebench and uh, other software and see, you know, if you set a target of around 250 or $300, what kind of equipment you can get. Uh, and so I just want to build some, build some machines and see how well they, they work. So the first one up here is I've got a, uh, an i3 40, uh, 4170 CPU, so 4th Gen i3, uh, it's the mid-end, mid, mid -end. Uh, and then I've got a GTX 1050 in here, not TI, just regular 1050, uh, as well as 8 gigs of RAM. And so I'm going to run through and see how it does. Uh, it will take a couple of minutes to also open up the case and check out what we've got inside. All right, okay, so let's break this computer open here. So we've been lay down a towel just to keep the case as pristine as possible. In here we have a GPU and uh, let's see if we can get a good view of that. So we'll take off the tripod here. So you've got your CPU, you got your GPU in this case, it's an MSI single fan 1050. Uh, and then down here we have two dims of RAM. So now with the location of the SATA cables back here, let's see if we can get a better angle on that. Uh, you can't really go any further on your GPU because then you're going to hit your SATAs. We line that up right here. I'm going to be able to handle maybe a 7 inch long GPU. Uh, again, this one looks like, oh, I guess, including that, you're 7, so you're probably going to be able to handle about an 8 inch. So, overall, though, we've got the uh, spinning disk here for games, your hard disk, you've got your SSD here, and we got the CD ROM also hooked up. Don't know why anymore. Um, but then, again, because this card is under 75 watt, all of it can be powered by the motherboard. So, overall, this is what the inside is going to look like. You end up with, uh, and then underneath this graphics card, which you can't see, you may be able to see down there, is a PCIe X1 slot. So, the graphics card covers that. Um, you got some, some solder joints there. So, in the event that the OEM, in this case HP, did want to have another PCIe X16 slot that could. Um, but then we have three SATA connectors that you can kind of see in there. So you got a blue one, a white one, and another blue one. Two shades of blue and a white. Uh, you get your regular power connector there. You got your four pin, or eight, uh, yeah, four pin for your power supply in. And you got a bunch of space all the way back there. So, so a quick pipe measure for GPU before it would hit the case. So from there to the uh, case is probably you'd safely be at about five and a half inches. So, for example, this one right here is at four and a half. Uh, so you could actually probably get closer to uh, right there. So under six, five and three quarter. But overall, it's not a badly built case. Uh, it's got a lot of room inside if you didn't have those SATA cables there. Again, if you got some right angle adapters, 
uh, like I don't have any here, um, but with some right angle adapters, those may be low enough that you can put your uh, a longer GPU in. And if you had it go all the way to the back, uh, you're running uh, what a uh, 12 inch around a 12 inch card. Uh, again, that may end up interfering with your your disk drive here. Um, but you got a lot of options, right? But now this does not swing out, so that would be an issue to get a card in, right? You can see we've got uh, some pop rivets here, top and down there even in the bottom. So this panel, I mean, you could remove it, but that's kind of a, a terminal removal. Uh, and then we have the ability to pull off the front panel. So let's see. Uh, plugged our USB. Uh, it doesn't look, uh, I think there may be a spot there for a case fan in the front, but I don't see any obvious hole pattern there. Uh, it's pretty bare here. Your power supply appears to be a standard ATX format. Um, and because you just have the regular connector on the board there, uh, you could just upgrade. So you should be able to just pull this power supply, put in a much beefier one, put in all your hardware. Again, CPU probably gonna be pretty easy to change. You do have somewhat, you know, these aren't just flat heads like you'd see most of the time. Uh, they're hex style, uh, here's a better example. So a large Phillips will work fine, or if you've got the, the star driver bit uh, to get to all of those, that'll be able to get you in. But overall, this is the machine here, and it's a pretty good deal. To kick it up a notch, uh, because a lot of the time on lower settings, it's actually more reliant on your CPU than it is your GPU. But uh, we're pretty high already. Let's go to Ultra. Apply. We'll go back to the practice range here on Ultra. And we'll check it out. And it should be more reliant, a little bit more on the CPU, but it should be focusing a lot of the oomph on the GPU, so I think we'll be able to keep our frame rate here while utilizing a little bit better. Yeah, so... As you can see, we're now at 80 or 90 FPS, 60, 70. Uh, we're pretty comfortable here. Let's try uh, a little bit more here. Champion and a champion just fell. Scanning the area. Okay, uh, I would say that we don't have four gigs of RAM, so I wouldn't expect that to work. But uh, I'm getting shot. No good. I've been down for a while. And, uh, Punching a tunnel. Sure what those are for. Let's go back to settings. We'll change this nineteen twenty by ten eighty. Let's go with I'll try sixty. Here we've got full screen borderless. Really, we should be full screen. Uh, full screen borderless was fine. Uh, we're holding the 66 where it. Uh, we're at uh, 10 by 720. So 720p gaming here, which looks okay. Uh, and we're a mixture of late, oh, 50 to 60. Uh, like I'm not noticing too much stutter here. So, uh, 
uh, it's relatively comfortable to play. Okay, so we've got the HP ProDesk here uh, with the i3. Uh, the are going to run is going to be Cinebench R20. So let's hit run and see what happens. Okay, uh, 767 points. That is not very good. Probably going to be running similar to like an 8th gen uh, Pentium Gold, maybe. Uh, I think that that was around seven or 800 uh, points. That's what you'd find in like the $200 high-end netbooks, not like the $100 HP Stream or uh, Dell Inspiron 11. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and run the full pass mark test here. So... Overall, our CPU, we're 20th percentile, 2D Mark 59th, 3D Mark 47th percentile, memory, not that great, and then hard disk, again. Overall, the HP ProDesk 280G1 was a competent gaming solution for $235. However, this is about the minimum you should pay for something with any realistic gaming potential. The case offers future expansion, so it gets a 20 out of 100. This is in part from the limited layout options due to port selection, so the option of getting a larger graphics card may be hindered. Uh, additionally, it doesn't have multi-fan support, so you're stuck with the one exhaust fan in the back with a limited option to put a case fan in the front. And lastly, it comes with a low watered CPU, so future GPU upgrades may be an issue. In Cinebench, Scores showed similar to an 8th generation Intel Celeron processor, which shows how far processors have come in the past five years. Passmark showed the system to be solidly in the low end of acceptably capable, and Overwatch could be played at max settings. Fortnite could be played on medium and still had some stuttering, though even on higher end systems it still stutters. Apex played smoothly on high with minimal frame dips, and COD played at 720 but struggled to keep up. So if COD is your target game, then you're probably going to need a computer with a better CPU and GPU. Overall, it had a score of 718, which shows that it's good value of money when it comes to doing light gaming and gives some future upgrade ability. Please note that these costs are a little bit inflated on this system due to the coronavirus clearing out a lot of our used market, 
This video has been a lot of fun, but I would appreciate any feedback. So please leave a comment for things you liked or didn't like uh, and any areas for improvement. Again, this is my first video here, so I'm still learning and trying to get the hang of everything. Thank you.